everyone, Lou here. You know, if you didn't know by my username, I'm a huge fan of Tokyo Hotel. They're my favorite band, and I've legitimately been a fan of theirs for over a decade. Yet, even I know they're not the most famous band there is. So, roll the intro, and let's begin doing a sort of documentary explaining Tokyo Hotel. <laughs> Tom and Bill Kaulitz were born in a small town decently far from Magdeburg, Germany. They were born on September 1st, 1989, and they're twins, with Tom being the older one and Bill being the younger one. They were pretty identical until middle school, where Bill decided to go for that punk look of the early 2000s, while Tom chose to adopt a hip-hop look as hip-hop was his favorite genre. Tom would become the guitarist for the band, while Bill would be the lead singer. Georg Listing was born on March 31st, 1989 and hasn't really said much about his personal life. He did say as a child he wanted to be a dentist, but later was too grossed out by the idea and would later on become the bassist and keyboardist for the band. Gustav Schaefer was born September 8th, 1988, being very similar to Georg where he doesn't say much about his personal life but apparently he has an older sister and absolutely loves heavy metal bands. He would become the drummer for the band. Our story starts in 1999 or 2000 where the Cowlitz twins Bill and Tom decided to become musicians after Bill started writing songs and Tom would write music for them. They would make a little band just the two of them and call themselves Black Question Mark. Why? According to a Tokyo Hotel video, Tom said it was because they wanted a logo that looked really cool and thought the German version of the name was too long and dumb, so they thought a cool English name like Black Question Mark was perfect for them. Also, they were like 11, so that explains a lot. The twins would perform at open mic concerts around Germany until meeting Georg and Gustav, where they'd form a more legitimate band and perform their songs there. These first few performances would change their name to something else because let's be honest, black question mark is pretty silly. A newspaper said their music was devilishly good and the twins were really into devil imagery at the time, so they picked devilish as the next band name. And they would release their first album or demo album in 2002 with very little success. To try and promote the band, Bill would go on Star Search. For those who don't know, Star Search was a TV show similar to American Idol and America's Got Talent, basically. Bill wouldn't get very far, at least to my knowledge, because little is documented of that season aside from Bill's appearance. But that TV show did get them some heavy press and would eventually get picked up by a producer to work on their first official album. The previous one was done independently, so, you know, now they have a professional one to work on. Soon enough, they were picked up by BMG when the twins were only 14. Though it wouldn't last long when Sony bought BMG and dropped most artists picked up by them. Luckily, they were picked up by Universal and have been under the branch ever since. Though they would switch from main Universal to their subsection of Cherry Tree Records to Universal's independent branch. It's unknown why they keep switching, but apparently Bill said in an interview from 2017 that it was due to the company trying to interfere with their work. When they were picked up by Universal, the band decided to rename themselves from Devilish to... Tokyo Hotel! Why? First of all, the spelling for the name Tokyo is the German spelling of the name. Second, it's because all four of them loved the city of Tokyo and hotels because they practically lived in them from trying to commute to record this album. That's when Tokyo Hotel would release their first major hit in August 2005, Thirst in Monsoon. The song blew the fuck up all over Germany. The song itself was a single for their upcoming album and is about a love song about going through a metaphorical storm to be with the one you love. It's honestly a really great song, and the music for it itself too is just really great. The song was such a huge hit that it even went platinum. Shortly after Dutch and Monsoon, the boys decided to release their first album as Tokitel called Skry, released in September 2005, and it basically took over all of Europe. I think Skry is a pretty damn good album, my personal favorite being Ich bin nicht ich. I uh, should probably mention, before I continue recording for the script, um, I have not spoken German in a very long time, so you are going to hear some very butchered German from me, uh, because my Deutsch is scheiße, so uh, yeah. 
As Bill had just finished puberty about a year after Scry, they would go back and re-record some songs with Bill's new vocal range, and would release a brand new album called Zimmer 483 in February 2007. It was Zimmer 483 that was just another arrow pointing up for the band, and it honestly is an incredible album. My personal favorites are In Die Nacht Frieden and Hilf mir Fliegen. A mini documentary series was made about the boys' lives and reactions throughout the tour, inspiring them to make a YouTube series called Tokyo Hotel TV that they make on and off to this very day. Tokyo Hotel TV is honestly the best decision they made because it created this intimacy with their fans that almost no other band did other than copycat bands like Cinema Bazaar tried to. No offense to Cinema Bazaar by the way, I really like their songs, even if they are Magdeburg hairdressers according to Tom Cowlitz. I mean, really think about it. This was made before vlogs of celebrities and other influencers was a popular thing on YouTube back in the day. I mean, even if their videos didn't get that many views, you have to admit it's honestly amazing a band would even make a series like this. Remember, this was the time of the nostalgia jerk, I mean, critic, and Windows Movie Maker intros were made by 10 year olds in their computer, you know? How do I find Tokyo Tel TV? Honestly, it's amazing. The guys are hilarious, and it shows you how they're actually really down to earth and still the same little boys from Germany. Not to mention, it's really detailed in their lives on the road, with episodes of Bill going to an American supermarket for the first time or Tom making a sandwich while talking shit the entire time. With their success in Germany and the rest of Europe, it was time for them to hit the big boy. The good old country of red, white, and blue. That's right, folks. The U.S. The year is 2007. Everyone has joined the Black Parade. Linkin Park AMVs are starting to rise as YouTube is still in its infancy. Paramore's got some business of misery to do. And no one can escape the hell of Hey There Delilah. In comes Tokyo Hotel, a band from Germany which the 2007 market for bands wasn't really used to seeing European bands on the scene. How big were they? Well, not that big, but they were at least bringing in some impressive numbers at least. On Billboard's top 200 albums for 2007, Scream would peak at number 39. They roughly sold about 75,000 albums within the US, so this may not be the exact number and might actually be a little higher because sales numbers for Tokyo Tell albums are not exact. And quite a few artists were putting Monsoon and Ready Set Go on their music playlists on Muse's celebrity playlists. They were even featured in preteen magazines like Bop and J14. Though I can't find any pictures for them online, so you're gonna have to trust my horribly aged posters from over 10 years ago in this shot here. They were also extensively interviewed by MTV and radio shows in Los Angeles and New York. Though these radio shows in particular weren't saved very well, so they're pretty much lost to time. In fact, a lot of interviews were poorly saved, as this was the infancy of saving media online. Not to mention this was uploaded when YouTube was still a dumb baby, so trying to find anything outside of 240p proves to be borderline impossible if you want to see them for yourself. As I wasn't a fan at this point yet, I still want to think Tokyo Tell was at least decently big. Their shirts did take up a large majority of walls at some Hot Topic stores for over a year, and a jacket was made based off Bill's star tattoo on his hip. I mean, if you've got Tokyo Tell merch in America in your first year there, then I'm gonna go on a whim here and say you were at least pretty big. Obviously not as big as Europe, but still pretty big. All this cultivated at the VMAs in 2008. Back in the day, getting best new artists meant something at the VMAs, so it was a pretty big deal that Tokyo Tell was nominated for this award in America after their first year here. Who were they nominated alongside? Miley Cyrus. Let me remind you how big Miley Cyrus was during this time for preteens and teenagers. Hannah Montana was at an all-time popularity, you could not walk in a Walmart or Target without seeing Hannah Montana-inspired clothes, and you couldn't walk by a child without hearing Best of Both Worlds. I would know, because I was the world's biggest Hannah Montana fan at that time. Hell, I went as Hannah Montana that year for Halloween like every other nine-year-old did that year. Now, Tokyo Tell was nominated against Miley Cyrus at the height of her career. Who was gonna win?
It was this moment that shocked me and I'm sure many other Miley Cyrus fans watching the VMAs that year. I just sat there with my jaw dropped because of all people, Miley Cyrus lost to a guy with Yu-Gi-Oh hair. Yet, I was fascinated. These guys looked absolutely nothing like I had seen before even though I had grown up with bands like Linkin Park and him. Turkey Tail had this punk aesthetic that I had never seen before that my 9 year old mind just immediately gravitated towards them. It's this moment that catapulted me into being the mega Tokyo Tell fan that I am today, and honestly, it's the best thing ever. They're a band that introduced me to so much and just genuinely have great music I connect to in many ways. Honestly, I can say no other band except maybe Owl City does that, so... And I know it's corny, but come on fam, we're talking about my favorite band of all time, of course I'm gonna get corny! After the VMAs, the band's journey across the US was coming to a close and they'd fade away to work on their next album that so many fans were heavily anticipating for after hearing quite a few interviews that the band was looking to make a new sound for this album. To try and keep fans entertained and occupied now that Tokyo Tell TV was done for now until their new album was ready to announce, Tom started a blog to get fans excited and to engage with them until their new album was done. It definitely worked for a time, even if Tom had some really weird tastes and things, gonna be honest here. Unfortunately, Tom's blog was lost to time. To my knowledge, no one has saved any articles from Tom's blog on the Tokyo Tell website, so unfortunately, I can only share the background that was used over the blog. I can at least share one funny story. Tom was one of the ones that fell for Kony 2012, so that was pretty funny just because of how many people fell for it. It was in August 2009 that Tokyo Tell would release a new single called Automatic from their newly announced album called Humanoid. This would be a really unique album for Tokyo Tell at the time because it came in two parts, one in English and the other in German. The band wanted to record the whole thing in English because, you know, English is the second most spoken language in the entire world, but decided against it out of trying to be loyal to their German fans. This was apparently very taxing on Bill in particular who had to write the same song in another language. And he was apparently very frustrated that oftentimes important parts of the song would simply get lost in translation if it was written in German first or in English first. As a huge example, I would recommend people read the translation's lyrics for Dark Side of the Sun's German version called Sonne and System and the English version because it's actually really different when you compare the translated German lyrics to the official English lyrics. And if you want to know what my favorite songs on Humanoid are, it's the song itself Humanoid, World Behind My Wall, and Automatic. Though Humanoid did really well in Europe, the album didn't fare too well in the United States to a point where I'm pretty positive that a tour for America wasn't possible because of the low sales numbers. Not to mention, the production for the tour, called Humanoid City, was just way too big and wouldn't really work for a small audience. I mean, they came out of a fucking globe covered in their logo for crying out loud. It's all good for me though, because in November 2009, Tokyo Tell decided to do an autograph signing. And guess who was at that autograph signing? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, me! I, I was actually uh, interviewed too, because I was the youngest fan there, because I had literally not even turned 11 yet, as my birthday was like a month later. I can still remember it to this day, because unfortunately I'm cursed with a very disturbingly good memory. But uh, what's really funny is I do remember Bill actually did kind of talk about me the day after the autograph signing for an interview from Team.com. Though what's weird is I can't find this specific interview he did with Teen.com, just some silly ones about fashion and who's the best and worst and stuff in the band. I don't know why I can't find this interview, I think it's because like I said, a lot of interviews from Tokyo Tell are kind of lost for time because they were very poorly saved, so... He said something along the lines of there was this little girl at the signing with her parents, she was shaking and crying, but she was really small and sweet, and then went on to say that it's moments like this that make the band really happy. Now I know it's pompous of me to think it's me, but he did refer to the signing last night, and I'm not kidding when I say I was the youngest Tokyo Hotel fan there. It's also true that I was visibly shaking 
and I was crying like a gosh damn fool because I was 10 years old, give me a break. Another really weird thing is I can't find the interview the lady pulled me aside for online. I don't know why I've never been able to find it for the last 10 years, but if anyone knows that interview, please link it down below because I would really like to see what my dumb 11 year old self said there. Again, not being a pompous asshole here, I am just being legitimately truthful that Bill did speak of me in an interview and I was pulled aside for an interview in the line at the autograph signing. I don't know why I can't find either of them, so it just makes me sound like a crazy person, but you're gonna have to take my word for it. Safe to say, that's one of my happiest memories to this day, and it's why Humanoid is my favorite song on the album. It was because Humanoid was playing in the background when I met them. Every time I hear that song, the memories come flooding back, and I can't help but smile every time it comes on when I play the album. Anyway, I just thought I'd throw this in here, because I'm just really curious and just hoping anyone can find it, because, you know, I've tried for 10 years with zero luck. As we reach the 2010s, Tokyo Tell finally reached a goal so many fans petitioned for up until that point. The band finally made it to Tokyo. That's right everyone, Tokyo Hotel made it to Tokyo. It was for a charity concert from 2011 for the Japan earthquake. But the point still stands that they made it there and it was awesome. They would continue to tour Asia until the very end of 2011 where we meet the radio silence yet again. The year was 2012, with Tokyo Tell on hiatus for a while to cool it after Humanoid proved to be a very long and tiring production to work on, though they always make sure their fans have something to look forward to and get interested in until their next album released. Bill and Tom decided to release an app called the BTK app, basically a social media app for Bill and Tom to post pictures, polls, and what boiled down to tweets, and the ability to talk directly to fans. Honestly, I met some really nice people through that app. And guess what, fam? Bill replied to me on the app after I made a dumb comment every fucking 14-year-old fangirl says to their favorite band member. Woohoo for self-embarrassment! Though the app had a nice enough community, even if I found many fans to be angry at the band all the time for no other reason than stupid shit like Bill changed his look again! Even though by now Bill has stated in every interview on this planet that he constantly changes his looks, so... Anyway, the app did face controversies though, aside from a toxic fanbase. The app cost about $3, which was very rare of at the time when buying an app was almost unheard of. Even now to this day, buying an app is pretty much unheard of, even with apps that have microtransactions. Updates for the Android version were also very slow and a little buggy compared to the Apple version where I was told by Apple users in the app that their version was smooth and other users like me that had Androids expressed concern with bugs and delayed updates. My guess was that Bill and Tom owned iPhones so they asked to pay a little more attention to the Apple version as that was the one their phones supported. A little bit selfish of them, but that's also my assumption, which is probably not true, so... There was an issue with the interface in general. You could join in chat rooms, read Bill and Tom's posts, see their gallery, and shop for merch, but there wasn't a private messaging system in the app for fans to exchange social media and private so no strangers in the app could read and try to harass other fans online. Another thing was, although we were charged $3, the app only lasted for about a year before it closed. Luckily, many replies and photos from the app were saved on Tumblr and Blogspot, though some definitely missing though I'm pretty sure. Luckily Bill, Tom, Georg, and Gustav got with the times and finally got their Instagram accounts. Though Bill, Georg, and Gustav use their accounts almost every day, Tom still refuses to post anything on his Instagram until he gets more followers than Bill. So uh, if you want to see Tom post something, follow his Instagram I guess. 2013 proved to be a very quiet year for the band. Almost nothing happened but everyone arguing over Tom's girlfriend. I mean, if he was happy, that's great, but I personally didn't care too much for her after I heard from many fans that she was rude to them. I get it, but at the same time, you gotta get used to fans if you're dating a musician, lady. 
Anyway, 2014 would prove to be a very big year when Bill dropped three separate singles in less than a week and announced a new album would be produced titled Kings of Suburbia. Although Humanoid means a lot to me because of the happy memories tied to it, Kings of Suburbia would prove to be one of my favorite Tokyo Tell albums done so far, mostly because I'm already a fan of synth music, so having this album be synth themed was just already amazing. And if you want to know my favorite songs from the album, it's Feel It All, We Found Us, and The Heart Gets No Sleep. Though that's honestly a really hard list to do because every song on this album is literally amazing. This would mark the return of Tokyo Hotel touring within the US. Though Kings of Suburbia didn't do too well, they switched to smaller venues and went on with the tour. As I wasn't a fan yet of Tokyo Hotel when they were first touring the US, guess who went to this one this time? That's right! Me. There was also an interesting tidbit about the album when Bill was performing that night in San Francisco. I'm not sure he told any other concerts, but hey, let it be heard here and now. Yes, by the way, the footage you see is from my recordings of the concert I went to. Alright, the next song we're gonna play is the first song we wrote for this album. I feel like it's, it's been the most important song for this record, so um, otherwise I feel like we would have never done this album. Suburbia proved to be another amazing time for Tokyo Tell, even though many fans left because they hated the electronic sound and nightclub vibes of the music, I matured into loving that music already, so hearing my favorite band making a style of music I already love proved to be no issue for me at all. Even if I'm gonna be honest, the Girls Got a Gun video is the weirdest music video I have seen in my life, and I've seen every Lady Gaga music video. Though, this hype train with Kings of Suburbia wouldn't really last too long. Thanks to their Instagram, fans weren't met with radio silence again, and we did see some great moments like Gustav having a child and Bill's little adventures in the world with his dogs. That is, until the release of Dream Machine in March 2017. However, I think Dream Machine proves to be their most divisive album among fans. I think the weird thing with Dream Machine was it didn't really have a theme in this case. As an example, Scream was the feeling of a punk rock concert, Humanoid was an industrial city, and Kings of Suburbia was a beach-themed nightclub. Yet, Dream Machine, it had a club feeling, but something about it felt alien and the cover's album was clearly based off 80s movie posters. Maybe that was the feeling. The sound was also very melancholic compared to the other albums. Yeah, even Scream. I still really like this album though. What If and Something New being my favorite songs from the album. More controversies would arrive, however. Merch for Dream Machine was extremely expensive. A set of four buttons with some song lyrics in the album cover ended up being almost $20 when you convert it to US. And add shipping on top of it. This sweater right here that I would 100% wear, it's $100. Not to mention you also have just really ugly merch like this yellow reversible jacket that they wanted almost $200 for. I know from interviews and Tokyo Tell TV that Bill loves designer brands, but Bill, honey, Band merch should not be this expensive. It felt so strange to me, especially when things like album shirts or something like that were usually around 20 bucks, which is usually the price of band shirts, let's be honest. Though this strange decision was the least of the fans' concerns over the strange greedy vibes Bill and Tom were giving off with this merch, the band then also announced a summer camp, of all things. To be honest, many fans viewed this as a disastrous idea, especially when they announced this summer camp literally right after Fire Festival, so that was bad timing. Similarly to Fire Festival, the ticket prices were around the same price as the festival, which sparked even more concerns among fans. And yes, the camp went pretty great, and tons of fans got to hang out with the band as if they were regular people and enjoying a party. There were some complaints. Now, Bill and Tom have been official vegetarians since 2012, and haven't touched a steak or burger since then. Now, a barbecue was hosted by Gustav and announced during this three-day weekend in a small island in Germany. But what the website failed to mention was that a lot of it was soy substitute instead of meat. Many of you might not know this, but soy allergy is a real thing. 
When food is provided to you by a service, it's extremely important that they mention what kinds of food are available for those with food allergies. I mean, probably not a good idea to have someone die from food allergies on a remote island in Germany that I'm pretty sure no one outside of Germany has ever heard before. Along with the summer camp and expensive merch, Tom also secretly married his girlfriend that I mentioned earlier and divorced her four months later. This isn't about her, and frankly, I think it's too private to go into details, but, um... Rumors speculate that she was, uh, secretly indulging in a certain career behind Tom's back, and, uh... Got close with her clients, if you catch my drift. What didn't help was apparently Dream Machine did not do so well, either. I mean, yeah, it did great, but just not as great as the other albums mentioned earlier. Many German fans were upset that it was another album in English, but Bill did state in an interview with the Rolling Stones and interviews during Humanoid's release that recording in two languages and translating so frequently was exhausting and proved to be very stressful on them to basically do the same song twice, like for Humanoid. I mean, I don't see an issue with this with the lack of German in Tokyo Tell songs nowadays, as it's probably best to speak the second most spoken language in the entire world. Just saying. Dream Machine proved to be a little messy when all other albums went off pretty smoothly. This luckily lands us to today. <laughs> is currently married to Heidi Klum. How did that happen? I don't know, and frankly, it does make me pretty sad that the media erases all of Tokyo Tell's hard work by saying they're just the band Heidi's husband is in. Yet despite their controversies, poor sales outside of Europe, I still love Tokyo Tell. Bill's ever-changing style is wonderfully unique, and honestly, Watching newer Tokyo Tell TV videos literally just shows that they're still the same kids who worked their asses off in Magdeburg to get where they are now. One thing I think we all can appreciate with Tokyo Tell is they never ignore their fans. Whenever they're in the studio, they always make sure their fans are entertained with something. Whether that's an episode of Tokyo Tell TV, an Instagram post of Bill's dog, Gustav going full dad mode that it's adorable, or the band promoting a new documentary, they always keep their fans occupied with something to gush over and never leave them in the dust. Though currently Tokyo Tell has two songs available right now called Melancholic Paradise and When It Rains It Pours. Though, I love the song of Melancholic Paradise, I will admit that it's repeating a lot of themes and lyrics found in Dream Machine and Kings of Suburbia. But gosh damn, when it rains it pours is really good. Apparently Bill is in the studio again recording, though it seems to be off and on right now as they are on a tour for literally the entire rest of the year for Melancholic Paradise. I don't know why they'd go on tour for one song, but who knows. Bill did apparently say live on Instagram stories that a new album is coming next year and might be named Melancholic Paradise because usually the tour is named after the album, even though the tour is coming first in this case, which is very strange to me. Who knows what the future holds for Tokyo Tell, but I hope this was really helpful in demonstrating for people on why I love this band so damn much. Let me know down below if you're curious to listen to their music. Have you ever heard of them before, or you loved them before but fell out of touch? If you have heard of Tokyo Tell, then do you guys have a favorite song? I'm super curious to hear. This video was definitely really fun to make, and it brought a lot of really happy memories. I'd love to do something like this again in the future, but I don't know if I'd stick to nostalgic bands or something like this, maybe with anime. So let me know down below. Hey guys, thanks for watching! If you liked the video, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new. And if any old or new subs would like to help support the channel in any way, then feel free to visit my Ko-fi page down below in the description, along with my social media tabs. For any subscribers, new or old, who'd like to help with video ideas or maybe want to talk about anime or something, then I have a fan server linked down below. See you next time!